Hi guys, my name is Ken from Cacao Culture and we're here at the date Davao Agri Trade Expo uh, here at SMX Lana. Date is an annual Agri Trade Expo hosted by the Davao Chamber of Commerce. You will see different agri ventures and agri products showcased here today. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Hapon sa inyong magtanan. Kudos for uh, constantly raising the bar as a stage a bigger and better date this year. Congratulations as well to the exhibitors and sponsors and to all the participants and guests from various agribusiness sectors in Mindanao and all over the world. Welcome to Davao City. The city government will remain your partner and we vow to exert more efforts to be steps ahead of situations, crises and emergencies in our agricultural industry. And we hope that you, our very active private sector partner, will continue to work with us so that together we can ensure adequate food supply and take active steps for the modernization and resiliency of our crops, livelihood, livestock, poultry, and aquaculture industries as we now enter the international market. May this date allow you to explore new knowledge and enhance existing ideas to develop our agri fishery sector, find better means to grow, process, and consume food, and in the process, improve the lives of all stakeholders, of all Mindanaoans, and all Filipinos. Once again, welcome to date 2019. Thank you very much for inviting me to be part of this Davao Agri Train Expo. This expo really lives up to its reputation as the Mindanao's biggest agri expo. So congratulations to the organizers and participants. I would also like to commend the Davao Chamber of Commerce and Mayor Sara for staging this kind of event every year that provides a very good exposure and venue for the agriculture industry players to learn about new ideas, best practices, and upcoming trends. Of course, the agriculture sector remains my priority in my second term as a senator and as chairperson of the Senate Committee on Agriculture and Food. It is also one of the priorities of the present administration. I firmly believe that the agriculture sector should always be a priority. As I always point out, the Philippines is an agricultural country and it's in the best interest of Filipinos and Philippines to do so. Two-thirds of the Philippines population is directly or indirectly involved in agriculture. And of course, like in any country with a fast-growing population, Food security is of paramount importance to us. We cannot ensure a food secure future for Filipinos without growing and developing an, uh, our agriculture sector. Alam nyo, may prediction po ang United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization that in 2050, uh, our population will grow world population will grow from 7 billion to 9 billion and we have to increase our food production by 70 percent to feed the world and they don't think we can do it so there will be a food shortage so dapat po kahit mangyari sa ibang bansa yun tayo sa Pilipinas dapat wala tayong food shortage as chairperson of the senate committee on agriculture and food for two terms now, I will continue to do my part in ensuring the further growth and development of the agriculture sector. So I think uh, you are more of coconut farmers than rice farmers. Kaya very important po tong bill na to. Uh, initially, uh, uh, this is the disposition of the Coco Levy Fund. Uh, we have agreed that we will give five billion a year out of the fund to help the coconut farmers in terms of improvements of their farms, shared facilities program, their uh, 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 
parang uh, um, free education for their children and then uh, health, uh, health assistance to their families and then assistance to their cooperatives. And at the same time, we hope to strengthen the Philippine Coconut Authority so they can do planting, replanting, uh, uh, intercropping with cacao and coffee, and uh, uh, processing so that uh, we can produce from, cacao, from coconut, cocoa sugar, and cocoa water. Alam ba ninyo, ang pinakasikat na produkto sa abroad ngayon are cocoa sugar and cocoa water. 45% of our farmers are in rice and 45% are in coconut. If we are able to improve the lives of the coconut farmers and the rice farmers, then we have improved the lives of the farmers in the Philippines. Yung iba pong crops, etc., etc., etc. It's really our coconut farmers and our rice farmers who are really uh, the big chunk of farmers in the Philippines. Kaya makakaasa po kayo na gagawin ko po ang lahat para makapagbigay ng uh, uh, tulong sa ating rice farmers and coconut farmers. Uh, how can we improve them? Coconut farmers, for example, are now aware that by merely intercropping coconut with other crops such as coffee and cacao, uh, they could earn more than additional 10,000 pesos a month. Moreover, if they plant using the new variety of coconut seedlings, their nut harvest can triple from 40 nuts per tree a year to 150 nuts a year per tree. So that would triple their income from coconut in addition to their intercropping income. They can also increase their income by not selling their coconut as raw, but processing them into cocoa sugar and cocoa water. At alam nyo, ang coconut po is the tree of life. Even the waste coconut has, magagamit nyo by using the decorticating machine. And of course, we will also look at the Philippine Fiber Industry Development Programs that seeks to spur the revival and development, production, processing, marketing, and distribution of Philippine local fibers such as cotton, piña, rami, silk, bagay, uh, and uh, pati yung uh, abaka, among others, in suitable areas of the country in order to provide income to people living in rural areas and spur economic growth. We will also mandate the establishment of instructional gardens in all the elementary and secondary school, public or private, making it a requirement for the creation and issuance of permit for schools and for other purposes. This bill aims to institutionalize gulayan sa para. Para nang sa ganoon, lahat tayo ay maraming gulay at ang ating maanak ay matututong kumain ng gulay para ma-prevent ang malnutrition for our children. And the last one would be uh, yung ating pong iamit natin yung Organic Agriculture Act na papalta natin yung uh, uh, kanilang pag uh, hindi na certification as organic from the uh, third party certification to a participatory guarantee system na mas mura po. Kasi yung per third party uh, certification, you spend around 100,000 a year. But the participatory guarantee system, you will only spend uh, two, 600 to 2,000 pesos a year. So we will amend that para maraming mag-hanap uh, buhay sa organ. So we still have a lot of work to do in agriculture sector, but with our combined efforts, we can achieve our collective goals
for the agriculture sector. Sabi mo ni Valdur Tur, may future pa daw ang agriculture. It will have a future if the private sector and the government will work together to improve our agriculture in the Philippines. With that, maraming po salamat. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. So today, as we start a new chapter in the effort to beef up Mindanao and realize its full potentials, please allow me to take you back to the basic principle of building a house. Let us build the posts or the foundations first. We have to focus on three basic concerns which stand in the way of Mindanao's development. Peace, productivity, and very high level of poverty. After a long and agonizing wait, President Duterte has finally forced an acceptable peace agreement with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front and has continued to reach out to the Moro National Liberation Front. How do we sustain this historical achievement? Shortly after the signing of the Bangsamoro Organic Law, which I think the Senator was also present in Malacanang last year, I had a chance of shaking hands and talking a day briefly with former MILF Chairman and now Chief Minister Aho Murad Ebrahim Alharj. I congratulated him for his steadfast struggle to give his people the peace agreement that they dreamed of. But at the same time, I also gave him a fair warning that the more difficult task of delivering what his people dreamed of during the struggle was the hardest part of a revolution. It is easy to wait a revolution. The difficult part is to deliver the promise of a better life for your people. Minda today must take an active role in ensuring that the gains of peace would be felt by the people of Mindanao today and the next generation. As the point person of President Duterte to the bar, I'm happy to report to the people that before I left the Department of Agriculture, the Agriculture Master Plan for the Bangsamoro region was already crafted by the stakeholders themselves. The proposed Agriculture Master Plan has been submitted to the President and Chief Minister Murad Ebrahim for implementation. Even before I could assume as the Mindanao Development Authority Secretary, several foreign governments and at least two private groups have offered their support for the development of the Bangsamoro region. The governments of Italy and Turkey have manifested their interest to join me in Mindanao while an Israeli group is willing to provide funding for the establishment of solar-powered irrigation projects come rural water supply systems in the remote villages of Mindanao. And we're offering double seed in the first prototype. The Israelis yesterday told me they would like to build one water system in Pakimato district uh, powered by solar to provide drinking water to our people in the remote areas of Greece. Ilang bang barangay pa natin hanggang ngayon sa Mindanao ang wala kong tubig na maiinom. This is a very serious concern. The government the government is willing to increase our participation in agricultural production, establish more fish cages, livestock, dairy, solar power irrigation, and fertilizer. The biggest concerns that I would like to address right away is the plummeting price, price of bad rice. And we are now guiding our farmers in Mindanao by discovering what the RTL provides. And this was mentioned by Senator Vidyar earlier. The RTL does not only allow the uh, importation of rice, it also allows the export of rice. So right now we are teaching our farmers, plant high value premium rice. And Madam Senator, I would like to report to you, we have just signed an agreement to export premium rice to Papua New Guinea, produced in Mindanao. We have also signed an agreement to export organic rice to the US, and there's already a contract that was signed. This is the way out. We cannot stop planting rice simply because the price of pan rice right now is low. We have to hang on to it, and the only way for us to encourage our farmers to hang on to it is to show to them that there is a way out of this situation. Plant premium rice, plant organic rice. The big dream to develop Mindanao encourage more investments 
will never come true if we do not have the needed infrastructure. More roads leading to the production areas and fish ports must be constructed. Maski yung ating kakao, bang, mahihirapan tayo ang transport kung walang maliliit na tulay o maliliit na kalsada. We have to focus on this. To sustain the expected fast-paced development, Mindanao must build more sustainable and renewable power generation facilities. We can only invite investors to come in if we are able to assure them of sustainable, steady, and less cost, less costly power rates. The name of the game right now is power generation. We have to generate power. Hindi pwedeng nagmamanufacture tayo ng tsokolate tapos biglang magraunaw patay ang tsokolate natin. No? Most of all, we have to address the chronic poverty in the islands and come up with a doable and practical program and projects to address poverty. Lanao del Sur, for example, is an enigma to me. How can a province so rich with resources have the highest poverty incidence in the country? I'm even starting to suspect, ma'am, that this is actually not an accurate reporting on poverty incidents in Lanao. The controversial issue today, the hottest item today, the African swine fever. In August of last year, August 2018, it was reported that African swine fever was in China. Then there was a list of countries. In total, we banned our pork exports or imports from 18 countries. We also waged information campaign. We uh, operated 24-7 uh, at the airports. We fielded our canines. But there was a loophole. And this was the smuggling of meat and meat products. There was one instance at the international airport. Our canines were able to sniff a package which when opened from the back of the incoming passenger, ang nakalagay na marka, chicken feet. Pero duda yung mga quarantine officers. Nung buksan yung pakete, ang nakalagay sa loob, karni ng baboy. So this was the problem actually. In spite of our efforts to inform the public of the threat and the dangers of ASF, meron pa rin matitigas ang ulo. You remember that controversial story about yung OFW na nakumpiskahan namin ng maling na nagreklamo pa kay Rafi Tulfo at pinatulfo pa kami. Bakit daw yung pagkakain sa kanya yung isang latang maling na matagal siya makabalik sa Pilipinas at yun lang daw pasunubong niya sa kanyang pamilya. They simply could not understand the implications of the African swine fever to the hog industry. And so while we were very vigilant in our efforts to contain the threat, there was a chink in our arm. And this was the unregulated, unreported, and even smuggling of pork, pork into the country. So finally, there was this incident in Rodriguez Rizal. And I would like to report to you what happened there. Ang sabi ng Bureau, no August 7, 2019, ang BAI AHWD, no, Animal Health Welfare Division, received a report from a consultant veterinarian asking about ASF symptoms because he, is cons he was concerned of the high morbidity and mortality of sows and fatteners in an area in Rizal. Look, this area is beside a dump site. At alam naman ninyo ang ginagawa sa dump site. Iniipon yung mga kaning baboy galing sa mga hotel, sa mga restaurants, at ginagawang negosyo. Binibenta sa mga piggy owners. We have been campaigning against swill feeding. Ito yung tinatawag na swill feeding. Pagpakaon o lamaw. But nobody listened. So he was concerned, especially with one pig vomited blood. This was August 7. Bahi advised the veterinarian to submit samples since the vet was hesitant to disclose the location in Rizal. In one case, 11 sows adjacent to each other died, some of which were sold as hot meat. May sakit na binenta pa. Kaya mamaya, makikita niyo kung anong problema talaga sa bansang ito. 
the problem actually here is the unwillingness of people to report incidents like this. This happened during the avian influenza outbreak in Central Luzon. Noong tumama na sa tatlong bayan sa kapan na report sa amin. But luckily we were able to contain it right away. We uh, set up a 7 kilometer radius. Uh, pinatay namin lahat ng mga manok. Pati itik, pati pogo, pinatay namin lahat. We closed Luzon. Sinarado namin Luzon. No eggs were allowed out uh, to go out of Luzon. No chicken were allowed to go out of Luzon. Next. The vet reported death in the night of August 7, 2019. Reports of dead pigs being disposed in irrigation canals were made. Can you imagine this? Talagang walang pakialam. Talagang why, 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 why puangod? Why, why puangod? Why pakialam? No mamatay, mas iman lang sana ilibing o i-report, hindi tinapon sa ilog, nagmutangan sa Marikina River. Consultant veterinarians provided locations where cases were observed. They did not report it at first. Now it is not true that DA did not report it. It was actually the piggery owners and the veterinarian in charge, private veterinarian, which who failed to make the report. Reported mortality has not reached yet reached 100%. Some cases were observed, but these were resolved through antibiotics. Next, please. After the reporting of the vet, BAE coordinated with DA. This was August 8. Regional Field Office, DARFO, for con the conduct of an investigation. The DARFO reported with this, uh, the report sila na investigate. Next. Upon the visit of the Mao, Municipal Agriculture Officer, several sounds were already dead. This was August 8. According to the interviewed farmers, this is started last week of July 2019. But this was not reported. So indeed, it could happen, have happened towards the end of my term as Secretary of Agriculture. Symptoms reported were loss of appetite, recompense, vomiting, death after two to three days. But look at this. Look at the greed. Some buyers took advantage of this situation and bought the animals at low price and supplied this to processing facilities in Bulacan. Next, please. So, ito yung background. Akala nila hap cholera. Initially, akala nila hap cholera. It was only when samples were sent to uh, the OIE or the World Health, World Animal Health Organization, when it was determined na talaga palang African swine fever. Next. Ito yung Spartan Farms that tested positive for ASF. Malapit ito sa Rodriguez dump site. Kaya nga, ma'am, ma'am Sarah, congratulations for issuing that executive order banning the, the sale and the use of lamang for our local hog raisers. Lamang talagang mga congratulations na ako sa that's why the most logical thing for us to do right now in Mindanao and even in other areas still not affected by ASF is to temporarily close our borders. Pasensya na. This is not about free trade. This is about quarantine. Temporaryo lang naman to. Hindi pwedeng makapasok. Kasi talagang tatamaan tayo kapag hindi natin napigil ang pagpasok ng contaminated na karne. Tatamaan at tatamaan talaga tayo. Kasi yun nang baboy na may sakit kapag nakagat ng lamang. At saka, yung AS virus can survive processing. Maski yung dilata ng maling, they can survive. They could still be there, dormant. And they will be activated the moment na ma-expose sila. Yun ang, yun ang kwento dyan. So, next. Okay. So, what did we do? Right after this happened, uh, and I give credit to the Mindanao Hawk Racers, palapakan natin yung Mindanao Hawk Racers, sila mismo. Kasi naman, alam ko naman, ang mam, ang Minda naman kasi walang pera. Pero yung Hawk Racers mismo, sila mismo nag-organize. We just arranged it, kami nagpatawag ng mga stakeholders, and we helped 
the first Mindanao Hat Racers Forum. At tinignan namin yung Luzon experience, what could we learn from the Luzon experience? Number one, the apathy of people, the non-involvement of the LGUs, at saka yung pagtago ng incidents. Yun ang mga tatlong culprits. Yung pagka, baliwala, baliwala na sa kain lang. Bahala mo niya, basta ako magpakaon ng lamaw. Yun ang problema. Bahala kayo dyan, basta ako magpapakain ako ng aning baboy. Mayroon mga talang mga hot racers, matigas ang ulo. Sinasabihan na huwag ka magpakain ng lamaw. Kung niya, hindi ka magkata ko fits ako. Yun ang, yun ang sasabihan sa inyo. Huwag ka magpakain ng aning baboy. Tapos hindi ka magpapakain, magpapakain ng fits ko. Yun ang, yun ang logic nila. So, Ang ginawa natin, may proposal kami, Madam Senator, I hope you can support us in this. We are not abandoning our brothers from Luzon. But it is high time for us to consider the proposal we made as early as 2018, uh, Madam Senator, right after the avian influenza. Dapat i-divide natin ang Pilipinas into three quarantine zones. One for Luzon, another for the Visayas, and another for Mindanao. What is the importance of this? Kasi, tulad ng ibang European countries, regionalized din yung kanilang quarantine zones. Kaya pag naputukan sila sa isang zone, pwede pa sila mag-export coming from another zone. That is the logic behind that. So, hindi pwede pag pumutok sa Luzon, the, the whole country, look, we were already about to export pork, chicken, and eggs to Singapore. Nagpunta na dito yung taga Singapore, they already inspected our facilities, then came this ASF. And simply because we are not regionalized as quarantine areas, hindi na makapag-export ng Mindanao ngayon. Kaya ito po yung isang advocacy natin ng Mindanao Appraisers. Baka pwedeng i-consider, i-divide po natin into three quarantine zones, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. We have already organized the uh, regional teams of ASF. And from there, next please. Ang Mindanao Hot Racers Association have signed a resolution asking for the, nabanggit ko na po, no? And we are asking all LGUs in Mindanao, the mayor especially, to issue executive orders preventing the entry of pork and processed pork products from ASF affected areas, not only Luzon, but other countries as well. Okay? And of course, banning swill feeding or pagpakaon sa lamaw. We are now uh, creating teams. We will go down from uh, the region. Pagkatapos namin, nag-organize na kami ng team. Bababa sa provinces, we will conduct uh, regular orientation, not only on ASF, but other hot diseases as well. So, bababa ng, uh, ng province, bababa ng towns. And then we are tapping uh, veterinary students from two schools, uh, USM and CMU. I will talk to the presidents of these universities at the engage natin yung mga veterinary students as volunteers. And uh, we will have to ask you to enforce the Food Security Act of, uh, of RA 10611. My penalidad ang pagpasok ng baboy. Kabi ng baboy galing sa labas na walang permit, 200,000. Tayo mismo ang kalaban natin. Alam natin delikado na yung ASF, matigas pa rin ang ulo natin. Wala tayong pakialan. Alam natin may sakit yung baboy, kinatay pa rin natin. At binenta pa rin natin. Pinagkitaan pa rin natin. Alam natin delikado ang pagpapasok ng karne ng baboy. Pero sabi nila, e pa paano yung negosyo ko? You know, my dear friends, for as long as we don't change this mindset, yung sasabihin ka agad, papano ako? Hindi natin iniisip, papano tayo? Until such time we change this mindset, my dear friends, we will always have problems. And the president is right. He was right when he said during the Sona that our enemy is us. I hope you will remember this and make us our friends. Thank you. I, uh, I, I believe that your uh, talk for today will be within a breakout session. I was not expecting 
dito pala ako magsasalita. But anyway, I'll try my best uh, para to share some information with you. So, all of those awards were actually part of my past as a news reporter and uh, as a person reporting about disasters, about war coverages. Now, one of the best uh, experiences that I've had during the campaign period with uh, Mayor Saba was uh, um, explaining about my advocacies in terms of uh, having a better agriculture for the Philippines. So, after the elections, I took over the hosting of a show in GMA uh, titled Agripreneur because our host, uh, Dr. William Dar was appointed as Secretary of Agriculture. In terms of, ano nga ba talaga yung mga problems with our agriculture? Number one, ang nakita ko po dito, hindi talaga tayo organized. Sa country, uh, di ba ang dami pong issue ng boarding, ang daming issue ng um, imbalances sa supply ng pagkain, pag tumaas yung presyo ng pagkain sa market, hindi natin alam kung bakit pa siya tumaas at paano siya bababa. One of the learnings na nakita ko po is because hindi alam nung left or right hand yung ginagawa nung left hand. In short, hindi alam nung ibang markets yung supply na meron doon sa kabilang market. So, may mga experiences na nabubulok yung pagkain, for example, sa Luzon, pero mayroong mga kakulangan sa, sa ibang parts ng Visayas. And being disorganized as it is, yun po yung nagiging problema natin. Hindi rin natin maplano kung ano ba talaga yung dapat itanim, saan itatanim, kailan magtatanim, ano yung fertili uh, fer uh, fertilizer application, kailan tatama yung bagyo at ibang scientific data na makakatulong sa ating magsasaka. So, coming from a crime reporter, a disaster reporter, parang in a few weeks, in a few months, ang dami kong natutunan about agriculture. Before, to be honest, underestimated ko po yung uh, pananaw sa isang magsasaka, sa isang magpapaboy. Dahil uh, I come from the urban center, the urban area, of course, ang tingin natin sa mga magsasaka o nagtatanim, madumi, maputi, pero sa mga interviews na ginagawa ko at sa mga episodes na na-air namin, nalaman ko na napakaraming opportunities at napakaraming income sa agriculture. Example, yesterday I was in Central Luzon State University sa Nueva Ecija. Malaman ng mga consumers saan ang gagaling ang kanilang pagkain, ano yung best practices para maparami yung kanilang production at paano makakatulong sa marketing ng kanilang mga produce itong programa entitled Agripreneur. Okay, meron pa pong iba. Another discovery was ang laki ng opportunity sa malalaking areas na may bakante or hindi ginagamit na lupa. Isang agritourism site ang aking pong i-feature and isa sa mga trabaho nila ay to rent out lands, idle lands, for 25,000 pesos a year sa mga magsasaka na hindi na po nila ginagamit o hindi nila nagagamit yung lupa. Pag nirent nila yung lupa, bibigyan nila ng option yung magsasaka. Gusto nyo bang taniman namin ng mais, amin yung harvest, o gusto nyo mag-invest ng mga 50,000 pesos at bibigyan namin kayo ng tubo na 15,000 pesos a month, or oh, sorry, a year para kumita kayo bilang magsasaka. On top of the rent na ginagawa namin. So, pag pumayag yung magsasaka um, at pinataniman niya ng mais yung kanyang lupa, for example, 
one hectare is equivalent to mga um, 3.8 tons of corn. Hindi yung interesado yung kausap kong farmer dun sa buma ng corn. Interesado lang siya dun lumaki yung plant, i-harvest yung plant, i-chop yung plant, and i-plastic. 5 pesos per kilo ang income niya per plastic bag na binibenta sa mga cattle farmers at yung mga nag-aalaga pa rin ng mga kalabaw, mga kambing, para pakain nila. In short, idle lands, pwede mapakinabangan, pwede nyo hong pagtaniman at mga opportunities so ito na nadidiscover, iminamarket namin or tinutulungan namin na mapaalam sa publiko para nang sa ganun, magkaroon din po kayo ng ideas ano ba yung mga opportunities na meron sa agriculture. So going back to the question of Mr. Tutor kanina, meron ba future sa agriculture? Napakalaki po ng future sa agriculture. At kanina, agriculture din ang pinag-uusapan namin ni Mayor Sara. Paano mapapalakas yung agri dito sa kanilang lugar? dito sa inyong lugar. So, marami yung opportunities but we just have to identify more markets. We have to match yung products na meron or wala tayo para ma-maximize natin yung income na meron po sa mga products or halaman or hayop na ating inaalagaan or itatanim. Yun po ang aking trabaho ngayon. Wala man ho kong farm kahit 300 square meter na farm, pero meron ho akong TV show. We're so happy to have you this afternoon sa atong Young Agripreneurs and Bloggers Meetup. The second straight year of this event. We started this event last year. We noted na daghay mga young people are interested in agribusiness. And we would like to continue this tradition. When it comes to agriculture, Maraming mga financial institutions that are not so uh, interested pagdating sa agriculture. They would prefer yung ibang mga business operations but not in agriculture. Kasi uh, hindi sigurado because may mga, may mga fortuitous event and then minsan Longestating yung mga projects ng agriculture. So ayaw nilang mag-finance sa agriculture. But since land bank is a government bank tasked to spur uh, countryside development, that's why wala kaming choice. Kami yung dapat na sa forefront ng financing for agriculture. So ang ipipresent ko po ngayon is kung ano yung mga facilities namin na pwedeng i-avail, sino yung mga pwedeng mag-avail, at saka kung ano yung mga programs, agricultural programs ng land bank. We are 100% government owned. We are the financing arm of the government for the agrarian reform program. And our social mandate is to spur, spur countryside development. And since we have to be on, in the countryside, that's why nasa 81 provinces ang landba. In terms of asset, third kami. In terms of deposit, number two. In terms of loans, fourth. In terms of capital, fourth. So, kahit government bank and land bank, hindi rin naman siya nagpapahuli sa mga commercial and universal banks. Basically, these are classified into two. Number one is the short-term loan line and then the term loan. Ang kaibahan nitong dalawa, kung ang project natin is like working capital, may business tayo. Let's say, for example, uh, you are into cacao, buy and sell or kahit sa production. Existing na yung farming nyo, all you need is the input requirements. So pagka noon, ang gagamitin natin na facility is yung short-term loan line. Credit line po yan. But ang project niyo, for example, is you will develop 
a cacao plantation. Magsisimula pa lang kayo. You will start from zero. Mag magsisimula tayo sa land preparation, hanggang sa planting. So, ang gagamitin natin ng facility is term loan. So, lahat ng... Halos lahat ng activities sa uh, agriculture is covered ng dalawang facility na ito. And basically, ang loanable amount namin is 80% of the total project cost. So, um, ibig sabihin, uh, 20% is the equity of the borrower. Hindi po pwedeng 100% ay i-finance ng banko at walang stake yung proponent ng project. Bakit? So, pwede hindi niya ayusin yung pag-manage ng kanyang project kung walang at stake on his part. So, kailangan may contribution din siya doon sa project so that he will do good. So basically, ito yung palaging tinatanong sa amin pag may mga clients kami na bumubunta sa banko, mga walking clients, ang una kaagad na tinatanong is, what is the interest rate? So, halos lahat ng banko, ang isasagot sa inyo is, depende sa market. Because everybody is doon ang pinaka-standard base ng aming pricing sa loans. So, mark, uh, depende tayo sa market rate. Pero, pag may mga special financing program ang banko, yun, minsan may mga special rates na binibigay. So, i-discuss ko in detail kung ano yung mga special programs na yan na ang interest rate is hindi based doon sa market. So, ang repayment terms naman ng ating mga loan facility, pag shorter, one year. Payable siya within one year. Pag term loan naman, kasi long-gestating yung ating project, depende po yan sa cash flow ng ating project. Kasi hindi naman siguro pwede na nag-develop ka ng, let's say for example, 10 hectares na cacao plantation, and then pababayaran namin sa inyo ng isang taon. Kasi magiging productive yung project ninyo after 2 years, di ba? So kaya, titignan namin ang inyong isasubmit na business plan kung how long yung term natin. Depende po sa pumapasok na income doon sa project. So, si Land Bank, meron din siyang program for young entrepreneurs. Ito po yun, YESA. Young Entrepreneurs from School to Agriculture Program. Kasi nakita ng government na karamihan sa mga bagong graduates ngayon ayaw sa agriculture. So, etong program na ito is designed for the newly grad na interested sa agriculture. So, ito po yun. Hindi to 35 years old. Parang nakapag-masteran na siya, no? 35 eh. Ito yung mga ano, eligible borrowers. Ang project is along agriculture and fisheries. Ang facility natin, short-term loan, term loan. Ang purpose is to purchase inputs, tools, equipment, construction of facilities. Loanable amount, 90%. Kasi special program siya. The same with ASEP, we finance the 90%, 10% lang yung equity. Unlike the regular na 20% yung equity na hinihingi namin from the borrower. Minimum 50%, maximum walang limit. As long as you have the 10%, we finance the 90%. Si Maribig Nubria, isang kadito worker dito sa ilahang lugar. Sa tiilan sa mong ato. Okay. So, ato 
2013, nag-start ang Apo ang Association. So, nananig ko ang, ang ipadesign ni sa Osaka NGO na mag-form pa mi o Osaka Organization. Kaya ingon nila, dili daw pa makitaan sa gobyerno kung dili mo grupo. Okay, so, nag-start ni o 20 mi kabuok farmer. Pero ato nga tayo, ang ako ang bana ang singing attend o ka ng mga training and seminars. Kaya tungod, isa ko ka-decker worker sa umuan ako yung klase every morning. So, ang nakita ko, ang mga training and seminar na kikandak nila dito sa atubangan sa mga baday. So, pagka nahimo namin yung kuan, nahimo namin yung isa ka-organization sa coffee, daghan ng mga trainings pero wala agyoy ka ng start o adapt ba. Kay siguro, hindi na ipagin sa damagwan ng masawa nila. So, naabot ako ng tabang sa different agencies sa government, ang DTI o ang DA. So, nanas nila yung mga machines na gibutang dito, nakadapta ka lang sa mukhang, sa mukhang atubangan sa balay. So, at that time, sa so, sige na kung paminaw, kaming paminaw, after sa akong klase, so, nagsabot ni sa kong pana na i-adapt na mo mga technology. So, ang, ang pag-offag yun, nisikat siya ng start sa isa ng papa, isa pa kapamilya na nag, nagpursigi ba para mag-go into coffee business. So, after that, niabot na po si ECDI Boca na naa siya yung mga trainings na focus na yun po kung sa ang kape. So, at nga time, ipadala ko nila sa Osaka Cupping, Cupping Class. So, dito na po na-open ang ako ang mga mata na unsa na ika importante ang kape. So, kinsa man sa inyo makaroon ang hindi mo inong kung kape ka na buktan. So, wala. So, itantanan lo. So, pila ba ka tao ang naa sa Pilipinas? So, sobrang millions. So, ang mga tuwang kape nga gikinahamdan inyo na ito kada 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 sa isa ka tuwe is 180 metric tons. So, ang ma-produce lang sa, sa Pilipinas is naa sa 60, 40 to 60 tons. So, kulang ta. So, kulang naga-import na din. So, kalaw, si, si Bakofa, uh, na, naka-training na siya tanan sa tanang trainings and seminars. But same sa, kung usap itong mga processing na gihing mo sa kakao, parang 90% parihas lang siya. So, from harvesting, kailangan picturing, ganang hinog lang yun ang ipon. Tapos, na-shy ka ng, na-apon siya yung fermentation time, same with cacao. Mga 90% yun siya, same ang processing sa cacao o kape. Tapos, after na, na-apon siya yung fermentation, na-drying, na-sorting, yun nga na-ihapon. Ang, ang, ka, ang kape lang is, lahi lang ang buwan sa buyers, kaya okay? buwan siya, ang, um, ang, um, before siya palitun sa isang kabayar, kailangan sa i-undergo o kapin. Before nila decide ang price. So, ang, ang nature dun sa, sa panginabuhi dito sa Bakofa is nakarilay lang ni sa gulay. Pero pag switch na mo into coffee, nausap ang dagal sa panginabuhi sa mga mag-uuma dito. So, kanon, sa una, ang presyo na po sa kape na alang sa sa isinta, ngadto sa 95 pesos per kilo. Sa local market. Pero karon nga, di-adapt di na ito ng bagong technology or mga bagong um, mga equipment na dapat gabito sa kape, siguro, mahulog mo sa inyong bangko kung gusulti ko kung pila ng presyo. Wala ba yung IRB rate? <laughs> so, karon ang amuang nananami sa, sa tama ang proseso sa kape, tama ang pagtanong sa kape, ang presyo na mo sa buwang kape sa pinakaubos na parang wala pa siya nakap, wala pa siya natinawan sa buyer. Kami lang ang nikap. So nakadesign lang ni kung pila na siya ang presyo na kaya nakabalo na po ni kung sa una mong pagtinaw ang mga kape. So ang presyo kung sa una sa isinta, magto sa 95 pesos ang presyo, Karon na ang isa 300 katong wala na graded na kape. Wala siya nagraduhan ha. Pero 
every year na ay cupping competition na ipahita po ang ICDI Boca para mailhan ka o balik kay nawala ang ato ang coffee industry sa Pilipinas. Nawala siya. So, nasila yung cupping competition every year. So, na, nahita po na nadaog ang Bakofa sa pinakalami na kape sa Pibuok Pilipinas. So last year, nag second place for me. Karun nga year, nahimog ng first place. So nakuha na po ang puno, ang lima na awards na pinakalami na kape. Top 1, top 4, top 6, top 7, o top 10. So nailan na sa market, muna na may problema. So pareha kay sir, sa, gigamit nga po ng internet, Pero kayo tungkol sa katungkapin competition na nahita po sa Tibuok Pilipinas, nahimot may ilado, kaya syempre ilan naman itong buwan, ano, asa ito dapat nahimutan itong pinakalabing na kape. So, naami kami 21 kabuok buyers na di-accommodate sa Bakofa, both local and international. So, na nami market sa Japan, nami sa market sa Canada, so, na nami market sa US. So, nakakontrata, nakakontrata na din na siya. Kanang, wala na din siya yung putol na kuan ba. Ang problema lang na mo karoon is ang production. So, ginahagit na po itong gusto ng mga young entrepreneurs na gusto magnegosyo o kape na pwede na na po good sugdan karoon kay kulang tayo nga po ang production. So, ang ang mga graded na yung kape na ka parehas na ng score na ba? Parehas na nakadaog, parehas na kuan. So, ang price na ito, ang pinaka-ubos na sa 600 pesos per kilo. So, na may kwarta ang kape, wala. Okay, sa una, ginagawa na ginayaw-yaw nila nga, wala na yung kwarta ang kape. Kapoy, annual year lang daw. Pero, we are so lucky, kaya kamuha mong kape dito, para siyang mahulog o kung year lang ng harvest. Kay, kuha na siya, mas kaya ka ng off-season, nag-happy mo. Dili itong harus na pag-harvest sa unang panahon. Itong old traditional way na pag-harvest ba? So, mo ko siya hinungdan na naka-add ko po sa US kaduhang ka-business. So, last year of this year. Last year, dito sa uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, sa Seattle, USA ba? Washington, D.C. So, dito ko ni Ando last year. Kay gi-offen ang boat para naanagay regular na pagbaligya dito sa US. So, apil na sa World Expo. So, nabalik na ang coffee industry sa Kawasan Asi. This year, dito na pag sa Boston. So, gipangitaan ko nila o oh, 20 tumiladas na kape. Wala yung kulitan doon kahit hindi pa manatok tayo. So, it's time na karoon sa mga young entrepreneurs o mga young at hard to conserve na pwede na din po mag-start kaya gawas na ang mamatapang puto sa kinaiyahan, di ba? Ang um, climate change na ito karong murag. Dili na gabayo. Especially nga naapagabi sa piilan sa mga apo na upaw na kayo. So maugin na ang apong advokasya sa Batofa na kung makalik lang ni sa market, i-care na po si farmer kay gusto na po natabangan na mauli ang kinaiyahan sa bukit while nga naapay income sa farmer sa kape. Kaya sustainable man ang kape, kabalik-balik ang tanong, dili nga pareha sa mga vegetable or gulay dito, na sige balik-balik ang soy erosion, dili nga niya lang mag-prepare. So, the switch me to coffee. I'm here to talk about uh, certain things, no? about cacao and the chocolate process. But I would like to start this off with a stanza from a poem of uh, Robert Frost, The Road Not Taken. This is the last stanza. I'll read it out to you. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood. And I, I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. So this uh, stanza is very important because we are faced with a choice. Now, everyday choices, no? pero there are certain forks in the road na kailangan natin mag-decide which path we should take. So, I'm here to tell you our story, how we started sa Kakao. So, we are not from Davao City. We're from Manila. 
So me and my wife moved from Manila. Uh, it was a decision that came after our closing of our business. So we came from a tech industry and we closed down our business and we packed our bags and said we'll move to Davao, uh, find our fortunes there. Uh, we didn't plan on going into cacao or agri, uh, the agriculture sector, but we wanted to do something in Davao City. So when we, we came here, uh, I guess we were led into a path where we met people who directed us to join this training, uh, meet these people. So what happened is that cacao found us. No, we didn't look for it. We found cacao and we fell in love with with uh, the process, the product, the agriculture part of it, and most importantly, we took the road less traveled by because there was chocolate. No, napaka simple lang na ano namin. There was no business plan. There was no magkano ba yung investment na kailangan. So ang point namin is. At the end of the day, if we couldn't sell our product, we could make chocolates. And that was the only reason why we went into it now. And now, three years after, so we just celebrated our third year anniversary as Cacao Culture. And uh, we're still here. And uh, I'm glad that we're able to share you our story. So, I'll go into Cacao process now. For those of you who are not into the cacao process, this is a bit parang snapshot lang. Kasi I am only given like a finite amount of time to tell you this part of the process. No? Um, first of all, you have to go through uh, of course growing it. No? Pero identifying varieties and also harvesting is very important no? in the process. And then next would be your fermentation. Now most of our cacao growers or cacao farmers do not do this process or skip this process and go directly to drying. But if you are uh, you are someone who would want to go into chocolate, then the fermentation process is a very important process because then po na develop yung chocolate flavor. No? Itong chocolate flavor na ito, hindi ito yung parang pagkagat mo, ay mapayat chocolate flavor na. Hindi yun. Dito po lumalabas yung fruitiness, yung mga uh, flavor notes that you wouldn't identify because most of us skip directly to drying. Hindi natin ito iniintend din na process. So, so this is one of the more critical parts of the process. And then we go to drying. We dry siguro, depending on the elements, meron ng mga mechanical dryers, but there are people who still believe that the natural elements like sun drying is still the better way no? than the mechanical dryers. And then lastly, uh, but also very important, sorting. So after natin i-dry, Ikailangan po natin i-sort which are the good beans and the bad beans. Meron po tayong mga bad beans din na nakamix like flat beans, like beans that are stuck together because we need to separate those things kasi pagdating na sa next step, uneven na yung mangyari. So the next step would be uh, roasting it. No? So pag halo-halo yung mga beans natin, may mga iba, smaller beans would roast faster, so masusulog na siya, hindi paluto yung iba beans natin. No? So I'll go next to the part of chocolate making process. I'll just breeze through this kasi meron akong good news and bad news for everyone. Ang good news is the Philippines has already been making chocolate for 450 years. Alam niyo ba yan? We've been making chocolate for 450 years and then yung parang tinitignan nating tableya. Sino bang tableya makers dito? May gumagawang tableya, yes. Hindi po kayo tableya makers but you are chocolate makers. Okay, yun yung good news. Ang bad news, ang observation natin ng chocolate ay napangunahan na ng western idea of what chocolate is. 
no? Ito na yung mga important brands, ito na yung kailangan matamis, kailangan etc. etc. So, yung pagtingin natin sa tablaya, yan po ay nag-iba. Pag tinignan natin yung tablaya, parang kinamaliit na lang natin. Kasi iba na yung, oy, sobrang smooth na to, sobrang tamis na to, sobrang milky. Kasi yun yung nasa foreign, no? yung mga imported na chocolate. Pero the tablaya is actually 100% chocolate. We've been making chocolate since dumating dito ang cacao na dinala ng galleon train ng mga Spanish. Okay? So I purposely put these images to show you na hindi naman kailangan ng sobrang uh, magarbong mga machines to do it. No? So in our process of learning how to do it, we realize that we Filipinos are already making chocolates. Niluto na natin sa kawa. We've been doing this for a long time. Lola natin, mga lola lola natin have been doing this. And then winnowing is just the separation of the beans uh, from the shell, no? Next is grinding. So familiar kayo dito yung mga peanut grinders natin. This is actually used to so, ilang beses na natin papadaan dyan para mas smooth, mas ano. And then lastly would be your tempering and molding. The tempering uh, part, ito po yung pag... Uh, inet sa pagbaba ng temperature of the chocolate para po magkaroon ng crystallization no this actually this step tempering medyo complicated step din siya dahil this produces the shininess the snappiness of the chocolate bars that you're making no so and then molding so etong process po na to ay natutunan lang din po namin partly sa mga pag-attend natin ng seminars but mostly we learned it sa Google and sa YouTube. So for the young agripreneurs here and the young at heart agripreneurs dito, we would like to share you, uh, share to you how we run our business. Kasi Yung how to make chocolate at uh, cacao planting, pwede din po natin matutunan yan sa ibang seminars and also sa ibang mga videos or sa Google. So, I would just to, I would just like to run down uh, itong mga topics that we would be covering. No? So, how we run our business, so kailangan embrace the internet. You don't have to be a genius. Yung mga ano natin dyan. Be great stewards. Show your work. Work hard and be patient. And don't, lastly, don't chase the money. So, ito po yun. So, sa atin, when I say embrace the internet, this internet or social media has changed the way we learn and we do business. So, I have close some deals, no? Uh, may mga taga-BIR ba dito? Wala? So, ano lang, no? So, in 2017, when we were starting out, uh, i-share ko lang that we started a Facebook page, an Instagram page, and I, every day, I message someone or a company na gusto nyo bang itry yung tablaya namin, gusto nyo bang itry yung products namin. Every day, no? And then, sometimes sa mga groups, sino ba member ng mga Facebook groups dito? Yung hindi yung puro meme lang yung sinishare. Eh? May mga business groups din dito. Minsan may nagpost doon isang calling card. Guys, if you are making uh, Filipino products, please contact this person, contact this number. And that's what I did. So, a relatively new company making tablea, making cacao products, contacted this person and they said, ah, Sige, Ken, padala ka lang. So, I submitted the samples and they liked it. And now we have been supplying to them for almost two years. So, the company that we've been supplying to was, or is, uh, City Malls. 
No? So, ito po yung malls under Double Dragon nila yung Japsia. So, we've been supplying uh, 36, around 36 malls nationwide. Just because of that calling card picture na may message ko that they said, padala ka, padal padala ko, and then they liked it. We haven't met them nung time na yun. We just communicated through chat or email. So yun po yung ano ng internet, no? So, ang sinasabi ko is, uh, lalo na dun sa mga, ano, uh, ayaw matuto, please be open to learning. Kasi ito na po, 2019 na po. If, you, if your business doesn't have a Facebook page, at least, hindi na po kayo magsasaksi. Yun po yung katotohanan. Okay? So, no, so you don't have to be a genius. We came into Kakao knowing nothing. We came into Kakao, background po namin sa IT, sa office. Wala po kami alam sa agriculture. We just research, learn, trial and error. Maraming mga mali. Siyempre, ngayon talaga eh. But we also wanted to share whatever we learned. You know? Next, be great stewards. Ang sa atin, or at least personal belief namin is we do not own all of the things that we own. So work hard and be patient. So ang sa amin is every day we try to to do the parang the business. Every day we work hard. Pero kailangan lang natin maging patient, hindi po siya, wala parang, wala po yung, hindi po totoo yung overnight success. Sa amin, I think, yung success will come siguro mga 10 years. If we go into it, mga 10 years pa, bago ka patawag talaga ng uh, successful. Pero there is, parang, the overnight success is a myth. You have to work hard and be patient that the results will come. And uh, lastly, don't chase the money kasi we've done this part in our previous business na parang hinabal lang namin yung pera and it didn't come. So yung approach namin now is that we don't chase the money. So yung mga decisions namin is more, is more based on what is right and what is uh, beneficial for everyone. It's a win-win always decision. So sometimes we have to leave money on the table and I think babalik din yan eventually. So ito po yung mantra namin, no? be kind, live simply, remain grateful, make chocolate. Yun lang talaga yung gusto namin gawin. And uh, I'm very grateful for you uh, sitting in the audience for listening to our story. If you have any questions, please uh, write it down for the open forum later. And then if you have uh, time, you could check us out sa Facebook, sa YouTube, sa Instagram, and even our website. Okay, so our first question natin is for Mr. Lau. What is the average volume of production that will allow every cacao entrepreneur to sustain the business on a daily or monthly basis? Uh, in terms of the farm, I think well, depending kasi on the location of the farm. Now, there are farms that have really good farm management and they could siguro attain maybe two plants a year per hectare. But uh, I think on the national average, it's only less than one ton a year. So, hindi siya ganun la... One ton per hectare? Per hectare. Like, yeah. so, so, medyo hindi siya lucrative in a sense that when you look at it on the data, parang magiging sad ka for it. But, again, there are new technologies that should be adopted by the farmers. And that's why you need to continue to learn. Kasi there are certain uh, parang practices, maybe from a different crop or different uh, farm style, that could be applicable to Macau and it could definitely increase the productivity. So ngayon, DDI and even DA is focusing more on productivity rather than expansion of platforms. So it's more productivity on focus this year and the following years for DDI and Okay, thank you.
Pero ang question dito is, nakatulong ba, isa pang follow up question, nakatulong ba yung fact na you are also processing your cacao? Uh, for us, I think it was our goal talaga. No? Per person, per entrepreneur, it has a different goal. Eh. Siyempre, when you just process the crop, as is as beans, you just trade it. Meron kayong margin doon, from farm to selling the beans. If you further process it into tablea, then meron kayo yung ulit margin. Some farmers don't want that, the struggle, kasi it's a totally different activity. Eh. Na farming up to the harvesting, would yield you at a certain point, let's say, 150 pesos per per kilo. But if you do the playa, you can earn maybe 250, 300 pesos, or even more, depending on that. So, again, it's up to the agri-greener kung saan siya gusto ng lugar in terms of that uh, value chain of the house. So, ang tawag natin dyan is a value chain. So, the, the further you go in the value chain, Mas marami kang magawa with the product, mas malaki ang potential income. Tama? That's correct. Okay, siguro same question, ipigay na din natin kay Ma'am Maribig. So, sa inyong pananong, kung sa akin ang maayong na yield per hectare per year sa kape, pila? Uh, same yung siya, sir, mga 8 to 1 time. Depende kung yung sa pag-care or kung sa ang mga practices sa farmer na pina-apply niya dito sa young farmer. Kay, um, for example, na ang farmer sa mga uh, tapat ng sa area. So, na siya yung 3 hectares. Tapos ako na alam ko yung mga almost 1 hectare na productive na kape. Pero mas ako kong income sa iya ha. Compare sa ako ah, kay sa 3 hectare. Compare sa 1 hectare, kung dili siya, dili niya i-apply ang good agricultural practices or Yung saan niya mag-process ang iyahang end product, gamay niya na po siya ganyan. So, i-compare na po sa 3 hectares, na siya 3 hectares, pero ang income niya is naalan sa sa 6 to 1,200 na kilo sa beans. Ano po kahibad ng po kung ano dako kung income compare sa iyahang, kaya naman ni data dito sa mga buo na 3 hectares iyahang area, pero mas dako ang ako. So, depende na na ni farmer or ni ni entrepreneur ka rin kung saan ang inyong product. Okay, thank you very much. So, depende sa practices na inyong gigamit, makakita kang kalagian between or among the different farms. No? So, that's one lesson. So, kanina, Mr. Law told us that the higher you go up the value chain, so mas daghan kayo mabuhat sa product, mas guwapo ang kita. Kung niya, Sama po sa kiningon or is diapit sa ato ang ibang maripig ganina, depende po kung kung saan ang pag-umuma or agricultural practice. No? Kung saan ang pag-umuma sa atong tanong na ay kalahian pag-abot sa harvest or yield. Okay, this time we have a question for land back. No? Actually, I don't know kung question ito. I have an overload of... Ano to? Flowers, roses, coffee, cacao, fish. Very good. No? I need to build a facility to market my products. How can I do? Go to We will talk. We will talk now. Yes. Okay. I think earlier, uh, Ms. Abad presented the different loan programs. But I think another question often asked is, uh, what is the main constraint that a lot of loan applicants face when applying and bakit sila hindi na-aprobahan? Maybe you can share para lang malaman din natin. Yes, sir. Uh, minisan, may misconception sila na madaming requirements. So, doon pa lang sa requirements na to turn off na sila. Well, hindi pa, kung titignan natin yung mga requirements na yun, uh, very basic. Actually, kung, like for example, sa small business, cooperatives, kung operating kayo and compliant kayo sa mga regulatory bodies, ano dyan na po yung mga requirements na yun? Hindi naman kami nang hinihig ng kakaibang requirements. 
very common yung mga requirements namin. So, number one yan, yung mga requirements. And then, isang makamaturn off pa is nangihigitaw ang banko ng collateral. Eh, syempre, banko po. So, ini-insure din namin na secure yung pera na pinautak namin sa inyo. Okay, pero meron bang non-collateral financing options available through land bank? Actually, sir, yung pinilisan ko po kanina na ASEP, pag-production po, hindi siya required ang collateral. Pero, mas maka, mas magiging mapadali, easier for us to evaluate kung may collateral. So, we're here today with Sir John of uh, the Davao Chamber of Commerce and uh, we would like to no more from the uh, from the Davao Chamber. A new purpose enough for having mounting uh, event like this every year. Yes, actually the Davao Agri Trade Expo is the biggest uh, agri trade event in Southern Philippines. We've been mounting this event for the last 21 years, and on average, over the last five years, we've been uh, getting about 9,000 to 10,000 visitors, and we've actually had. Uh, a lot of interest in our business and a lot of new interest in our products like coca, cacao and coffee as well as coconut. In terms of small farmers, what are the trends that you are seeing in how they do business, how they deal with their customers? Yeah, for the last 21 years, they evolved na. Noon kasi parang ang farmers natin mo production. So ngayon, yung farmers natin na natututo na sila ngayon na magpaliwad. So, yung mga process products na sila. So, nangyari, nag-improve na yung income nila. So that was a very great event here at DATE. We are uh, now experiencing a boom in the interest for agriculture and agriculture business. We hope that future agripreneurs are inspired to go into business, helping our farmers and promoting Filipinas an agriculture entrepreneurial space. See you next year!